ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय स्वामी प्रभुपाद तस्यानुभावकथितो गुणाश्च परमो दया भौमान रेणुन सबिम मे यो विष्णुर्वाणयेदुण Okay so you can read the word for word and the translation in Tamil Today is a joyful glorious and auspicious day Of course in Krishna consciousness every day is joyful glorious and auspicious but today is especially so because of the uh, celebration of the appearance of Bhagavan Varaha Deva uh, We know where Krishna appeared Where did Krishna appear Mathura is that right well that's what everyone says but the uh, residents the rajavasi say he appeared in vrindavan which is also within mathura district where did ram appear ayodhya all right very good where did varaha dev appear brahma loka well he appeared from the nostril of brahma <coughs> here in the purport it stated that according to some opinions varaha dev he remained within the water for many millions of years and we should not doubt this because the lord has he is inconceivable but even the very appearance and the very existence of varaha dev is inconceivable he appeared first of all from the nostril of brahma what size was he when he appeared who can remember what's the answer Specifically, it's described well in the Bhagavatam. It says he appeared at, at the size of the upper part of the thumb. Uh, for a start, appearing from the nose, it's not a normal way to get born. And uh, then he immediately became very huge, so big he can pick up the whole earth. So now all our scientists have run away, and probably. Everyone else is run away also. In Christianity they worship Jesus. They think he's God. In Islam they think that God has no form. In Buddhism also Vishnu is worshiped as the ninth avatar among the dash avatars in human form. Who will accept that God has appeared in the form of a pig? If we want to insult someone we call them a pig or in Hindi the son of a pig. In Tamil what do you call? Is it an insult to call someone a pig? Yeah. So what to say? This uh, inconceivable. Of course, a Varaha Dev, he is the supreme lord. Mm-hmm. So even in the form of a pig, he is uh, extremely beautiful. We may wonder how a pig form could be beautiful. Uh, there's one famous uh, painter modern painter of a uh, religious painter who died recently b n sharma he has painted varaha dev and from his painting you can see he is inspired by divya saraswati uh, you can see how varaha dev is very beautiful <laughs> but uh, he's inconceivable he's not he's definitely not an ordinary pig he's so big he can pick up the earth on his tusks if we if at all we are to accept that the supreme personality of godhead is all powerful then we have to accept that everything is possible for him it is he who who creates maintains and destroys all the universe so if he can create the whole universe then why can't he pick up or assume a form big enough to pick up a small part of it actually all this doubting why should we doubt we find in shila prabhupad's preaching that a lot of his preaching goes to uh, refute or oppose the empiric outlook but previous acharyas they didn't do so it's only in uh, yeah they they just they make some comments but they never say how they never try to justify the appearance of varaha they just state that he appeared 
He fought with Hiranyaksha. He killed him. He picked up the earth. This uh, doubtfulness of the empiricists has become the dominant worldview in the modern age. Of course, doubt is not something unique to Kali Yuga or to the modern age, or the present, the last few hundred years of Kali Yuga, the, the age of the enlightenment, they call it, when people became more stupid than ever. There's all, there'll always be someone in human society who doesn't believe that Vishnu can put an elephant through an eye of a needle. But this uh, arrogant, condescending, so-called scientific worldview that presently dominates the world, uh, through that lens, people do not accept Shastra. But previously, uh, people would just discuss. Some of this uh, Varaha appeared like this. Vamana came, he became so big, he covered the whole universe in two steps. So, we just accept. That's all. Uh, Varaha Dev is the Supreme Personality of God. He appeared to uh, lift up the earth and to destroy Hir- Hiranyaksha, the, the the uh, story is narrated in the third canto of the Bhagavatam, how Jaya and Vijay, the doorkeepers of Vaikuntha, were cursed to fall to this material world. And they first appeared as Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. And uh, there, there are two appearances of the uh, of Varaha Dev, uh, according to some Acharyas, and according to some Acharyas, one appearance. But these are the these two activities, lifting up the earth and killing Hiranyaksha, these are the two uh, prominent activities of Varaha Dev. The Bhumi, uh, that is of course the name of the earth, uh, she is also one of the Shaktis or wives of Vishnu. And she also appears as uh, Satyabhama in Krishna Lila. So uh, at the time of lifting up... Uh, the earth, from which was sunk in the Garbhudak, uh, the the ocean of, within the universe, at the bottom of the universe, at that time uh, Vishnu Varaha impregnated her, and a uh, son was born. So uh, Varaha Dev is often worshipped as Bhu Varaha. That's just like we have Lakshmi Narayana, Sita Ram. So uh, we can say just Narayana or we can say Lakshmi Narayana. We can say just Rama or we can say Sita Rama. We can say Varaha or we can say Bhuvaraha. She is his Shakti, his wife. And it seems that uh, previously uh, within this Kali Yoga, the worship of Varaha Dev was more widespread, especially by uh, kings. And many kings would take the name Bhuvaraha. And... Uh, <coughs> Varaha is especially connected with Yagya. We'll find the prayers to him are especially connecting him with Yagya. He's also known as Yagya Varaha. So that's also a, a major activities of kings in Vedic culture is to offer sacrifices to Vishnu. Among the uh, Dashavatara, we find that the first uh, f- five um, mostly worshipped in the Ramanuja Sampradaya. Matsya, Kurma, Varaha, the first three we don't find worshipped hardly outside Ramanuja Sampradaya. Narasimha is widely worshipped, but especially in Ramanuja Sampradaya. And Vamana is also uh, mostly. Parashur, yeah. Parashuram, we don't find worship much except in Kerala. <laughs> then na- number seven, Ramachandra Bhagavan is widely worshipped everywhere. Everywhere means within the civilized world, which means within, <laughs> within India. Uh, but even then, especially more so, we'll find it in the... Uh, well, it's given much prominence also. In, well, in North India, the uh, the Ramanandis, who are an offshoot of the Ramanuja Sampradaya, they mostly worship Ram. Everyone worships Ram. But the uh, Madhva Sampradaya, they, they worship Krishna mostly and Narayana. The uh, Nimbaka Sampradaya, they're concentrated on Krishna, Radha Krishna. Gorya Sampradaya, Krishna. And the Vallabh Sampradaya, which is the present representation of Vishnu Swami Sampradaya, they're also concentrating on Krishna. Then uh, the eighth avatar is Balaram, or uh, sometimes taken as Krishna. So everyone worships Krishna. Mm. Not much worship of Balaram in, 
then uh, Buddha is not worshipped by any Vaishnavas, only by Buddhists. And Kalki, also not much, we don't find much worship of him. He's yet to come. Of course, he already appeared in Tamil Nadu recently. (laughs) But, uh, well, someone thinks like that. Yeah. Did you say the word Muttal? Yeah, okay, that is, he's a fool, he's a rascal, so-called Kalki avatar. So uh, Varaha Dev, we'll find present temples of Varaha Dev, they're mostly in South India, outside of Kerala, which has its own culture. That means in uh, Tamil Nadu, what's now called Tamil Nadu, what's now called Andhra Pradesh, which is soon going to be divided, it seems. And in Karnataka, these are the places where there are temples of Bhuvaraha. And, yeah, no, not in Kerala, so anyway, as far as I know. So, uh, and especially, well, those of us who are staying in northern Tamil Nadu, we know that Kanchi, there's the Varaha temple, we regularly visit there. So, we should preach Varaha Mahima, the glories of Varaha Dev. Actually, we have to preach the glories of Krishna. And Gorias means to preach the glories of Radha Krishna, especially, or well, maybe not especially, but ultimately the uh, the intimacy of Radha and Krishna, God at His best, <laughs> God at His best. That is, of course, a very confidential topic, and that is especially celebrated in the Gita Govinda of Jaydev Goswami. The song or the kirtan which we just sung, that is uh, at the this Dashavata Stotram, that is at the introduction of Gita Govinda. So before we hear about Srinu Sukadam Sukadam Srinu Sukadam Shubadam Bhavasaram, in this material world, hearing about the ten avatars, Sri Jayadeva. Idam Shridaya Deva Kavaya Idam Udita Mudaram Shunu Sukadam Shubadam Bhavasaram Keshavadhritta Dasha Vidharupa Jaya Jagadisha In this material world, uh, hearing about Jagadish, the controller of the universe in his ten forms, as recounted by Jayadev, is uh, very pleasing and very auspicious. So when we hear about Krishna uh, and the past, intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna, we should first of all know that this Krishna, he is Jagadish, the controller of the universe. It is uh, he who appears as Matsya Kurma Varaha Narasimadi Dashavidha Avatar. We can preach the glories of Varaha. Who can think of a good way to preach the glories of Varaha, Dev? What shall we do? We'll go out in the streets and tell everyone that today is the day that the Supreme has appeared in the form of a transcendental boar. Who can think of a good way to preach the glories of Varaha Deva? Distribute Bhagavatam says. This, this is the science of God. Ah, Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangasya Jayate. This uh, knowledge of the science of God as imparted in Srimad Bhagavatam will free one from the entanglement of this material world. So everything is imparted systematically there. So that by reading systematically through these books, uh, one can, one is prepared to accept and comprehend the nature of the avatars. Srila Prabhupada's purports prepare the reader who, even someone with no background in Vedic culture, to accept the truth of Varaha avatar. So on the day of Varaha Dwadashi, we can think how to <coughs> preach the glories of Varaha Dev by distributing Srila Prabhupada's books and especially the Srimad Bhagavatam. And I am sure that if we distribute Srimad Bhagavatam sets in Sinhalis, that the thoughtful people of this country will accept that this, uh, this knowledge needs to be adopted by 
individuals and by the whole society. To, today is Varaha Dvadashi and tomorrow is Nityananda Trayodashi. Nityananda Prabhu is the first preacher of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's cult. So uh, we should pray to Nityananda Prabhu for the strength to preach Krishna consciousness. Actually, it should be a very good time for preaching in Sri Lanka. The, uh, the, I, as, even among the Sinhalese, the whole country is now being subjected to moder- modernity. In just, it's just being <laughs> smashed onto it. Is it not? Yes. They're just they've been living simply, and all of a sudden, big highways and all modern things, and uh, so they're just thrown into the modern world, and they're discombobulated. Everyone has to go to school and learn all this nonsense things that they teach them in the school. And although they have a long tradition of Buddhism, uh, the, the real Buddhists are becoming less and less. The religion is not spread or maintained simply by buildings and organizations. It requires exemplars, real sadhus to uphold that. So, although we may be... Uh, concerned with our own little lives, we should think about how to bring Krishna consciousness to others. And uh, the, the first thing we have to do when we come to any country is to get the books translated and distributed. Of course, when we come, we have to do Harinam and we have to make centers and this and that, but the, the real preaching begins with the books. Srila Prabhupada always emphasized this. So the appearance of Varaha Dev is inconceivable. So we can pray for his mercy that this little Krishna consciousness movement in Sri Lanka, which is nice but nothing to get too excited about from the material point of view, it's nothing, nothing, it's just a, just a few people, that it may become very big very quickly and subdue all the demons. <laughs> But I, I don't know this country very well, but I don't think there are like really not many real hardcore demons here. Is it? There are not many. There are people, there was a horrible war just now, but people uh, they are actually mild-mannered and religious and uh, most people, you don't find people who actually want to be bad who are really trying to mess people up, like you do find in other places. At the same time, uh, they are very attached to their own traditions and we'll have to very carefully introduce them to Krishna consciousness. The Hindus here, they say this is Shiva Bhumi. Is that particularly this northeast part or the whole of Sri Lanka? Especially the northeast, the Tamil area. They say it's Shiva Bhumi. They don't want it to be Krishna Bhumi. Is it? We may get some opposition from them. <laughs> but you can tell them that, well, why this area? Actually, he's Parameshwar of the whole universe, so the whole universe is Shiva Bhumi from that aspect. Uh, he's Parameshwar, but he's Parameshwar for the material world, and above him is Vishnu. They may not accept that. <laughs> but, but this is not particularly Shiva Bhumi. Some places we can say Shiva Bhumi, like Kedarnath. They're, they're ancient temples of, of, of self-manifested Shiva. Uh, uh, Varanasi is Shiva Bhumi. Then uh, there's that Rameshwaram. Um, well, both, both of them. Well, there, there are the, uh, there are the uh, different lingas of the, the Pancha. What are they called? Mahabhuta lingas. Ujjain, Mahakaleshwar is Ujjain. No, there's the, there's that's the, the, there's the. Uh, Jalalinga, Akashalinga, and all this in different places. Yeah. So uh, and uh, so, but this is not this is not Shiva Bhumi. This is Shaiva Bhumi, <laughs> because they consider themselves followers of Shiva. So it's Shaiva Bhumi. So we should quote to them from Padma Purana. What does Lord Shiva say? Aradhananam sarve sham vishnu aradhanam param. Yeah. Anyway, that's that. That next part is a bit much for them. Let once. <laughs> One step at a time. One step at a time. The topmost worship is that of Vishnu. Books, let the books go out. That will change the atmosphere. We see that all over the world. With mass distribution of books and festivals and public chanting of Hare Krishna, distribution of prasadam, then uh, gradually the people's attitude changes. Hare Krishna. Varaha Dev Bhagavan Ki Jai. 
Yeah. You mentioned that uh, this place is a very nice place and the time was a very nice week. Mm. So that is why I am here. My husband, my grandmother has said to me, don't stay here, you come back to Melbourne. But still, I am uh, not against to my grandmother, but still I want to preach in Sri Lanka. Yeah. So Jai. Get the books, book, get the books in Sinhalese. You please do that. My humble request here at this point is Dr. Vilas Maharaj, please. You also come and help us at least once or three months to come to Sri Lanka. This is a disease case. So you are a doctor, so you are a specialist. So you should come to Sri Lanka at least once in a month, once in three months. The same request I made to this and also about He's doing that more and more, yeah. At least once in six months, at least. Thank you for your kind supplication that I come regularly. Yeah. The thing is that I have so many, wherever I go, they say that. But some places they tell me don't come at all. Either, either they tell me don't come or come more. I've I've donated Vasudev Prabhu full time. Yes, we I know, but still we want to at least just stay at least All right, I'm with you in at least in spirit. <laughs> but devotees are coming regularly. Those books, Sinhalese. We need the books in Sinhalese. Most important. Yeah. Cultivate him. Cultivate him. He's Sinhalese? Tamil. Speaks very good. We have our, uh, we have our historian, his, historical actor. You instead of acting history, you can make history. Make history. We can teach people what is the full Buddhism. Buddha means intelligent. So, full manifestation of Buddhism is to what is to love. The main beyond simply getting free from suffering is love. That's the highest. That's why we see that. Uh, oh, now we get into a big discussion. There was Buddha himself. What he taught that is what is called that has come out as Theravada Buddhism, which is pop, oh yeah, which is prominent in Sri Lanka, which is basically philosophy and moral activity, dharma, dhamma, as it is in Pali. Mahayana Buddhism is, actually it's complete speculation, but it is the propensity to worship and to love is incorporated in that. It's a speculation because Buddha didn't teach anything like that at all. But we see even in the countries where the Theravada or the original Buddhism is strong, like in Sri Lanka, and I spent time in Thailand also, everyone's worshipping someone. If, if it's not Buddha, they're worshipping Hindu gods, spirits, the propensity to worship is inherent in every living being. So we would like to inform the Buddhists that cessation of suffering is the beginning, but beyond that is the platform of pure love. That is bhakti. Anyway, that's a big topic. <laughs> hmm? But I'm, I'm pretty sure, I, again, I haven't studied, but I'm pretty sure that most Buddhists have very little idea about what the actual teachings of Buddhism are because it's the same in every religion. They don't know. And Hindu, in that respect, Hindus are champions. <laughs> if, you ask any Hin, if you ask any Hindu what is the meaning of Hinduism... How many Hindus are in the world? About a billion or so? You'll probably get a billion different answers. <laughs> or, or maybe you'll just get a blank face from most of them. And, the, yeah. and probably the best educated are the Muslims. I mean, even they, don't, they may not be educated in anything, but they know what the tenets of their religion are, whether it's Shia or Sunni or whatever. So our movement, as Srila Prabhupada said, is meant to be a, an educational movement. Uh, people from Hindu background tend to take to it sentimentally, but we should learn what is in these books. We should study and understand. Otherwise, why should we follow? We should, we should know.
And we shouldn't think that because people don't have a big education, they don't have an MSc or an LLB or something like that, that they can't understand these things. This is spiritual knowledge. And we find uh, many devotees from backgrounds, they don't have much material education, but they can, they can understand this philosophy very nicely. Maybe I'm an example. I don't have any big education from, uh, from the material sense. Hmm? PhD means Chaitanya Charitamrita. Ah. Now, Tamil Tamil Sri Matbagavatam set is printed new by BBT Bombay, and we got some sponsors from Kuwaiti. So we would like to order one big load of Sri Matbagavatam. So you would like to give us a target for 2014? How many sets left? How much do you think the target should be of distributing Bhagavatam sets? So wait, how many sponsors? I was thinking. Uh, one thousand two hundred fifty. You sponsor one thousand. Uh-huh. But we can order as much as we like, but we have to distribute. I see, yeah. On credit? Yeah. Like you. Well, whatever you think you can do, think more. In, uh, for one year. In uh, Kartik and Vrindavan, I told Radhesh in Surat, he should distribute Bhagavatam sets during the marathon. They had no experience of dis- distributing sets. And uh, they set a target. I can't remember what it was. But what, 51, and they exceeded that target. I, even though they had no experience of doing that. This, this whole Bhagavatam set distribution among my disciples, began with Acharya Prabhu in Tamil Nadu and going into places where they never heard of Iskon. He doesn't speak a word of Tamil and he would distribute Bhagavatam sets. If people... Of, co- of course, we present that especially to people who show some interest, particularly when we show them Gita and all, they, they show some special interest. Then we show them the set. It's very impressive. If you see, if you see a whole set of these books... With all and and you, and you tell them it's an encyclopedia of spiritual knowledge, and they can see that the, there's so many books with so much, uh, it's all the different covers, different pastimes are shown. It's very they've never seen anything like that, never imagined anything like that in their life. In the 1970s, mid 1970s, Srila Prabhupada had some of his top disciples go to the universities to distribute his sets of Bhagavatam. And many of these professors, when they saw these books, they would just get very excited because it's, it's just something that they, they wanted, but they, they didn't have it. Now, now they have it. It's, they know of the Bhagavatam and the, from the, academically, they know of the Bhagavatam and it's important, but there's no good English edition. What to speak of that's beautifully produced with explanations and each Sanskrit word is explained. Many of them got very excited and they wrote superb reviews just expressing their their appreciation. And the devotees who are reading these books daily, they, they also become so excited to share this knowledge that their enthusiasm, it, it transmits to other people and they, they, they just want to take the books. And you have to know what's in the books to answer the questions that people are going to ask you. So the whole world becomes purified and we ourselves we are forced to become advanced by by distributing these books, especially the sets of books. And, uh, and people read these books and they hear about all the great devotees and the qualities of devotees. They expect us to reflect those qualities, so we have to come up to the standard. So it's a great program of purification. In the West, our devotees can hide behind pants and shirts and wigs and you know. Which Srila Prabhupada allowed for book distribution. But in these countries, there's no hiding. We are public figures 24 hours a day. We have to represent Srila Prabhupada and the Parampara. 50 sets. You're, you're thinking of 50 sets for now. You meet interested people often, is it? People are actually interested to take the book. I think in, in the north, in Jaffna area, you could do. I can tell one story. Um, because they, are, they they feel the need more. Yes, we were there in Jaffna just one month ago. We were distributing in hospitals. And uh, Rekori Prabhu, uh, I told him about Acharya Prabhu and Selam devotees, how they distribute. And then he said, I told them that they show, they present. It's not that Bhagavatam just, they, they have to present. You have to show it to them, yeah. Then he said, okay, today I will go. So, so he packed half of the set in his, mm. his shoulder bag. I stayed back, I had some work. So he called after 15 minutes from the hospital. 
hospital. Algi, two sets. Two sets, 14,000. They pay on the spot within 15 minutes. Keep us praying. Then why why do you only want to take 50 then? I'm just spamming. I'm just spamming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not only interesting people. If we go out and present, then they will think. Srila Prabhupada said that he wanted that every every gentleman in America should have a set of his books in his house. And then after after they'd been to all the universities, then they started just doing door to door. And they were and they were selling sets of books. In America. So Okay, all right, but already more than one month's gone. So they have to make up make up time. Yeah, so yeah, distribute these sets. And um, you can supplement the set, of course, with the Bhagavatam. You can also Gita, Science of Self Realization. You can make Krishna. You can make a mega set with, with throwing, put as many whatever books are there in Tamil. Yeah, for the libraries. Yeah, whatever Tamil books are there, give it to them. And Sinhala books we need very much. It's it's uh, you know it's really. How to put it? It's not good that after all these years we don't have Prabhupada's books in the local language. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's good in one sense. You can go and meet him again, also. Yeah, yeah. We we have to do it. it has to be done. Urgent. Already one generation has gone. Our devotees first came here in when? 1976, I think. Hansadutta Maharaj came. 76, was it? Or seven? Yeah, yeah, they came. 76, so it's almost 40 years. So it's time. Time to get busy. <laughs> That can be done also. Or they can buy them also. If we can get sponsors, we can donate. From the library, yeah. Very good. Yeah, we should. Yeah, People who go to libraries and read means they're, they're interested in knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are many things to do. Many things to do. Yeah, yeah. The educated people, the monks, all this. And many things to do. Yeah, introductory book, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Many things to do. There's a lot of work to do. Gradually things will develop. Uh, well, it requires some research. I, I, I know almost nothing about... I know very little about Buddhism. And especially as it's practiced in Sri Lanka, I have very little idea, actually. It's, it requires research. I'm, yeah, I'm busy. I have so many books to write. So many books to write. A lot of work to do. So you can all take part in this. Just I saw here, there's uh, this, uh, this college of arts. And, and it's, it's, it's drama, sculpture, poetry... Music, you hardly see any such thing in all of India. What to speak of in some small town in Sri Lanka? That's, that's a good sign. In Calcutta, near our temple, they have the Kala Niketan, a similar thing. Some places. There are some places in India where people actually have some interest in culture. There are a few places. Calcutta, Chennai, Varanasi like that, major cultural centers. But in general, it's just engineering colleges, that's all. <laughs> well, do something there. Let's see. Let's see. Hare Krishna!